Taking a back seat to the launch of the Galaxy S22 series is introduction of three more high-end Android Galaxy Tab devices, namely the Tab S8, the Tab S8 Plus, and the Mammoth Tab S8 Ultra. And while they're not the star attraction, they could be the more interesting trio. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So in the world of extra tech, a dedicated tablet can offer a great second screen experience. And on the Android side of things, the newly unveiled Galaxy Tab S8 series is vying for your hard earned money. Are they worth that high entry price? Well, we have had some hands on time with these to kind of find out. And this new Galaxy Tab S8 series falls distinctly into three sizes, the 11 inch model, the 12.9 inch model, and there is a mammoth 14.6 incher. The latter Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is an absolute behemoth and that has some issues and a few benefits on its own. So talking quickly about the biggest device from the get-go, it's unclear just how many people out there are looking for such a large Android tablet form factor. Sure, there are some undoubted benefits, but Android's limitations on such large displays, at least at this point in time, feel very much like a hindrance. And because of that, despite only spending a short period with this trio, this largest model in the lineup is simultaneously the most interesting and in some ways, the most confusing. The major standout issue currently that we can see is that Android 12 itself does not lend itself well to this oversized form factor. And Samsung will not ship this device with the upcoming Android 12 L. That means at least shortly after launch, any tweaks made to help the usability will need to come from within one UI with no obvious or direct input from Google to help maintain or use this form factor effectively. My own biggest concern and is that of the stretched smartphone UI, which has been utilized by most Android tablets. It just seems to feel much worse on the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Things such as icon spacing is almost bonkers, and you simply cannot use this piece of tech with multiple hands on it. The optional kickstand, which comes as a paid extra, starts to become a must. And at that point, a high-end tablet seems to make less and less sense than a dedicated laptop as you get few actual benefits simply because public Android builds or those currently available are not really yet optimized for such a oversized form factor. That said though, it is hard to argue that this oversized 14 inch tablet is exceptional for media consumption and vying into that, it's not just the display as the speakers on this device are excellent. So long as that is, you don't cover those grills on the sides, which do pump the sound outwards. The central notch as well, which was one of the concerns ahead of time, does seem at odds with the kind of the rest of the lineup. I'll admit that. But when I actually started using this device, I simply stopped noticing when zipping around this specific version of One UI 4.1. The Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra's minor display bezel kind of, even if it wasn't that obvious, means it's intended, of course, for landscape mode. And that means that Again, you're going to be having to look for a prop or a kickstand or some sort of extra which will make use of it. Samsung though has added some multi-window and split screen tweaks to kind of take advantage of the full 2960 by 1848 pixel AMOLED panel. And this does help things out, but it's still a really unwieldy device and it's awkward to manage without actually placing it on a surface or kind of having it propped up somewhere. That kind of does let this package down in many ways, but I can clearly see that some people out there would really love this actual device size and it would be a major benefit to them. Being able to do things like run multiple apps in large, almost full screen panels concurrently is a great feature in its own right. And maybe it will get tuned over time to really take advantage of the larger display on offer here. It is worth noting as well though, that these smaller models, they still too have this split screen features and those expansion controls, they're available on the Tab S8 and S8 Plus. However, the resolutions do take a dip to 2560 by 1600 and 2800 by 1752 pixels respectively. Then also if you add in the entry level model it comes with an LCD panel rather than an AMOLED screen that is used on the Tab S8 and the S8 Ultra, things do start to downgrade slightly and those price decreases do start to make a little bit more sense. It's in these two models that I feel Samsung kind of offers the better Android tablet experience. And for fans out there wanting a high end Android tablet, you're getting a better overall package. No matter which model you choose, you still get a 120 hertz screen, be that LCD or AMOLED, and that LCD panel is still really good, all things considered. There's also the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor, and you just get a much more manageable form factor. 
really little is lost here and it also just makes the prices a little bit more easy to digest. Sadly though, I've got to say we weren't able to test out some of the extra features that Samsung has touted throughout their unpacked launch event, but we are really hoping that the DeX features can really help kind of hammer home that these are useful extra tools for your daily life. So although we had a really short hands-on period, I think while the Galaxy S22 series is confusing in its own way, the Galaxy Tab S8 lineup seemingly doesn't necessarily quite understand what it wants to be from the get-go. It is fantastic to see Samsung continue to invest in high-end Android tablets, but most prominently the Ultra model is a little bit too big and it's inhibited by the actual OS itself rather than the tablet size. The size just kind of encroaches too closely upon many dedicated two-in-one laptop form factors, kind of form factors that often include far more power under the hood and therefore greater productivity tools and capabilities right out of the box. And although expensive, the smaller Galaxy Tab S8 and S8 Plus, they feel like better overall additions to the series and provide that great second screen experience, albeit with similar but less problematic OS drawbacks, courtesy of their reduced sizes. Sadly though, the productivity tools for Android or Android 12 as it is, they're still not yet comparable with the iPad and iPad OS. And so even though the Tab S8 lineup is capable, it is bound to be relegated to a second screen use case, at least as far as we're concerned. With that said though, that's just a few brief thoughts about the Tab S8, the Tab S8 Plus and the Tab S8 Ultra. We would love to know your thoughts on this entire new series, especially that mammoth one of the Tab S8 Ultra that is. Let us know down in the comment sections below what you think of Samsung's kind of relegated extra tablet announcement alongside the S22 series. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.